the Minnesota Timberwolves are going to win the world championship. I think they're going to win it all. I'm, 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 I'm looking at what I'm looking at. I'm looking at Tim Legler. Put, put, put Tim Legler on that screen. I need my basketball guy right there with my man Shea Shea. I'm, I'm going to say it again. Several bad puns later. The Minnesota Timberwolves have me looking like I have made the worst prediction in the history of my career. I've never been more embarrassed. Meanwhile, back in the lowlands. This series is a wrap. <laughs> Minnesota is better than the Nuggets. It Denver is Nuggets. absolutely yeah. over. You might get a game, maybe two, maybe. I maybe doubt two. that. This series is over. One long angry line later. Do you believe the T-Wolves are going to sweep the Nuggets? Hell yeah, I do. Hell yeah, I do. Is this series now completely, utterly over? It's a wrap. Rap, mm -hmm. says Keyshawn. Epilogue. And Minnesota will drop this one. And that is all she wrote. Jokic will run it out. The Nuggets go up three games to two and are one game away from the Western Conference Finals. It's one thing that countless talking heads have made poorly aged takes, utterly doubting the reigning champions. But when one of the most well-known hip-hop artists of all time and Lil Wayne is coming out and saying things like, quote-unquote, I don't like Jokic's game, he looked like the dad of a YMCA player, then you know the Nikola Jokic doubting, shame, and tomfoolery is relentless. I know all the greats have a short memory, but the most ironic part about Wayne saying he doesn't like Nikola's game is, last postseason, he was caught on camera reacting like this to Jokic. Joker ain't no joke! You feel me? You feel me? <laughs> reaction essentially says it all right there about how absorbingly outstanding Nikola's game actually is. Wayne's actions right there speak louder than his recent statement regarding Cola. Your boy D Flo has made several videos covering hate for Jokic in the past, but it really never ends with the disregard for Nikola's all-time greatness. As this video gets to, it's gotten to the point where Joker has sent the association into a state of total disarray. This take from Jake Lee implies if you are to call yourself a knowledgeable basketball fan, you must agree with either one of former NBA role player JJ Redick or another former NBA role player in Kendrick Perkins takes. Don't get me wrong, I lean towards the JJ Redick take in saying that we should just appreciate Jokic for his greatness and agree with this tweet from Phil Fanak that states, like, are we not watching Jokic hit 98% smother floaters and reverse layups? Who the fuck is guarding that? At the same time though, let's not act like Gobert letting up 8 field goals in the 9 times he guarded Jokic in game 5 and the 75 points and 20 assists Jokic dropped between games 4 and 5 against Minnesota doesn't deserve criticism, because if that's the player we're calling the DPOY, then maybe there's a problem with the award system. Just because of Joker's all-time greatness, it doesn't mean people can't criticize Gobert for having won 4 Defensive Player of the Year awards and not earning that trophy when it matters most. Perkins definitely shouldn't have called Gobert a defensive liability, but it doesn't mean things are so black and white to the point where JJ and Kendrick's opinions are a litmus test. Logically, nothing could be more absurd, and not based off Reddick or Perkins being role players in their playing days, but based off everyone having the right to state multiple narratives within an argument, a lot comes into play, but I digress. These talking heads will flip-flop to save face on a daily basis, but I recently stumbled across Nick Wright of Fox Sports doubling down on his infamous take about Nikola Jokic being the worst MVP in nearly half a century in 2021. Wright would reply to a tweet about his take being bad by saying, Folks don't want to take on the substance of what I said, which is fine. Again, look at everyone who has won the MVP in the last 40 years, then list the people who you think Jokic is going to finish his career ahead of in the all-time pyramid. It's just Derrick Rose. I'm out, man. That take exposes Wright's lack of basketball knowledge completely. Given Jokic is shaping out to be one of the greatest players of all time, and in my book, is already top 10 all time. Then, there was former role player Evan Turner displaying how badly he didn't want Jokic to win MVP. You like what Jokic did, then you gotta throw Sabonis in the conversation. 
Like, and that's, yeah. that's my only thing to really neutralize Jokic this year. Because I'm like, at one point, I'm like, they doing Sabonis so dirty. All he's doing is what y'all about. And he can't even get an all-star game. And he can't even get an all-star game. It's not even no recognition that he, he leading the league in triple doubles as a 6'10 big man or whatever is going on. Like, he's also changing the way how the game is being played as well. So that's where I was like, if Sabonis ain't getting no love, shout out to Jokic, but he can lose this year if he didn't win a division. You say you don't care about the trophy, so give it to somebody that actually <laughs> cares. Like, they need that bone and stock. However, when it comes to the biggest hater as of late... I think it's Shaq. I don't like to rain on people's parade. Number one seed, which team has a better record? I felt Shea Alexander deserved it. And again, no disrespect to the Joker. Best big man in the league by far. Uh, you could have went this way, but I, I thought Shea Gilgis Alexander, one of only you know a few players that had 30 points 50 times, stat stuffer, great season. His team is number one. Nobody expected him to be number one. I thought the SGA should have been the MVP. That's no disrespect to you, but congratulations. And what do you guys have to do to get back on track versus Minnesota? What? Thank you, Shay. We don't judge people here, you know, so that's fine. It's your opinion. I'm joking. <laughs> no, 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 I'm not no, hey, all good. I love you. I love your brothers. One thing we always going to do is keep it real with each other. Congratulations. There is a lot of people that, a lot of players that deserve it. You know, it's probably details and kind of small, small things. In response to Shaq, let's look at why it was so disrespectful and then some for the Hall of Famer to bring up SGA and discredit Jokic like he did. On top of the fact that all of Twitter.com was against Shaq dis. Let's compare the 2023-2024 regular seasons that were voted upon by the media for this year's Michael Jordan Most Valuable Player of the Year award of Jokic and SGA. Nikola, unlike Shea, was one of the four major stat category leaders, as another chapter of the European invasion commenced with Slovenian Luka Doncic leading the league in points per game, Lithuanian Demontis Sabonis leading the league in rebounds per game, Oshkosh Wisconsin's Tyrese Halliburton leading the league in assists per game, and Serbian Nikola Jokic leading the league in win shares. Fellow Torontonian Shea Gildress Alexander did lead the league in steals per game, and credit to the Oklahoma City Thunder's franchise player in SGA for posting 10 straight games with at least 25 points and at least 2 steals, joining Michael Jordan and Allen Iverson as the only other players to ever do that since 1973-74. However, the reason Shaq had no business bringing up my G from the 6 in the MVP discussion, especially in front of Jokic, was that Nikola was not merely by the eye test with his all-time great craftiness, footwork, post skill, both passing range and accuracy, along with improved lateral quickness, hustle, and ethics, but he was statistically the best, practically across the board, at least in the advanced categories. In the 2023-24 campaign, spanning nine months from October to June, I'm here to inform the great but misinformed Shaquille Rashawn O'Neal that Nikola Jokic, or as we've nicknamed him on this channel, the kid from Sombor, led the league by far in player efficiency rating, offensive win shares, win shares per 48 minutes, box plus minus, offensive box plus minus, defensive box plus minus, and value over a place Men lie, women lie, but numbers, my friend, the big shamrock, those Mr. O'Neal, they never lie. Jokic is the greatest in the game, aka. Okay, aka. What? <laughs> aka what? What are you waiting for me to talk? <laughs> All right, let's talk. Waiting for you to finish. <laughs> aka means also known as. Okay, I didn't know that. The MVP. Feel free to get creative here as well as go off the board and mention a take that's being slaughtered and wasn't mentioned in this video, but which false prediction slash narrative slash talking head is the Joker currently making look the most odd? Today's shout out goes to 42 Ultra who says, Underrated storyline about the Nuggets is how good of a fit Malone is for this team. Pause to read the rest of that comment from 42 Ultra. Appreciate that take and every other. Thank you for watching. Your boy DFlow signing off, and I'll see you next video.